Hey, what's up everyone? I'm performing an EWS bypass today on a BMW E36. And basically, people have been doing this for years now. So it's nothing new by all means. But I just wanted to throw out a video on it. So basically, EWS refers to electronic drive away protection. And in 95, BMW installed the EWS 2 system which carries the immobilizer in the car plus it carries a program chip in the computer which communicates with the immobilizer which will then allow the vehicle to start so if you damaged your computer by water or other means you would have to go to BMW and they install a new computer reprogram it to your VIN which is pretty crazy but that's how they do it and it's pretty expensive going that route um, the other thing you could do is pick up a replacement ECU from the wrecking yard and throw in a, an EWS delete chip which you can get at Tuner Motorsports and go that route or you can bypass the EWS module and run any 413 ECU you want. You could also run an earlier 413 Maroon ECU which was found on pre-95 BMW E36 and E34s. So it opens up a lot more windows and also you can run non-EWS performance chips that are actually meant for this guy here so today what I'll do as a test is I'm going to remove the stock computer chip from this computer that was in the car that I'm working on today and this has EWS coding for the immobilizer in the car so I'll pull this guy out and throw in a non EWS performance chip which I have laying around somewhere I gotta dig it out but I'll install that into this computer and we'll do the bypass and then uh, test fire it with this guy. Also, I'll test out this maroon label 413 ECU which has no EWS coating in it and fire it up with this too. So we'll take it step by step and locate the wire which can either be cut or disconnected from the pin and we'll source it out and go through the steps. All right. So to get started, I disconnected the battery because you don't want to damage the ECU while you're disconnecting it. And you just have to remove these three plastic retainers. And usually there's two plastic nuts on the bottom here. This vehicle's missing them. But you'll probably have to remove those as well. And it slides right out. Next, we just remove these screws hold, holding on the plastic cover here. And slide straight up. And then out. And that's it. At that point, the ECU is located on the bottom of this compartment, and this is usually where it floods too on these cars. This car hasn't had that problem yet, from what I know. And you pull it straight out unlatch the connector and that's it and basically we're going to do a continuity check on pin 66 which connects to the EWS control module which is a solid green wire and we'll check for continuity make sure we're on the right pin and that's it Okay, so I'm going to go over the hardware 
that holds the glove box in and there's eight screws which are located in the vent here on the other side of the vent then below the vent there's two more also down here there's two more and you might need a stubby Phillips to get in here it's pretty tight so just below the glove box there's another one over here and to the right another one here so that's it for the screws there's just one more fastener and what you need to do is just pry the back of the glove box light out straight down and then slide it back and what we're going after is that 10 millimeter bolt up there just remove that and you'll be able to slide the glove box out you could slide the vent out separately here's a one piece unit here just slide that out and then the glove box next and that's pretty much it okay so I removed all the hardware from the glove box so now I'm going to remove it and I'll start with this vent system here and yeah, this is a one piece unit pretty simple then the glove box will just slide right out and I'm going to remove the glove box completely from the car because you need the extra room down there to get to the uh, EWS module. So disconnect the interior light harness and the flashlight charger harness. That's it. You'll be able to pull it out. Okay, so I have the glove box removed. And here's the two connectors that I unplugged. One here, one here. So what we're after is this large yellow connector here. This is the EWS module and it's on the very bottom of all the modules. And to get it out, take a flat blade screwdriver and slide the latch all the way left. And at that point you can remove it. So what we need to do from here is cut pin 66 wire, which is this solid small grain wire right here it's the fourth one in from right to left I'll probably end up cutting it up here and then I'll cap both ends off and then we'll take it from there alright okay so we located the solid grain wire at the EWS plug so now let's verify that it's connected to pin 66 on the ECU connector so what you're looking at here is I've tapped in to pin 66 location which is the 11th pin from right to left that I colored in red there. So there's a voltmeter in the car right now that will set to ohms so we can check for continuity between pin 66 here and the solid green wire on the EWS connector. So let's go ahead and verify that. Okay, we'll set the voltmeter to ohms. And we're going for the fourth wire from right to left. It's a little green one here. Okay, so that checks out as pin 66. So we got to go ahead to cut it and cap both ends off. Then we'll move on from there. Okay, so I cut pin 66 wire and I use some heat shrink tubing to cap both ends of the wires off. Here's the other one. 
I'll probably put some electrical tape on it to make it look pretty again. And with this little modification we just did, we'll be able to run any 413 ECU and any aftermarket performance chip that has no EWS coding in it. So at this point, I'm going to plug it back in to the EWS module and then we'll do a test fire. All right. Okay, I just reinstalled the glove box and I've reconnected the ECU to the harness and I reconnected the battery terminal. And what I did earlier is I replaced the stock chip which was or which has EWS coding in it with a aftermarket performance chip with that has no EWS coding. And we'll use that guy today as a test mule. And actually this chip here was actually meant for the Maroon 413, which has no EWS in it, which was found in pre-95 E36s and E34s. So we'll test this one out too. And I put a ground strap on the ECU going the chassis ground to protect it while it's out of the well down below there. So that's about it. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see how she runs. fired right up so it works out real well here so now what I'm going to do is swap the EWS2 computer with that non-EWS chip and put in the Maroon 413 which I think is out of a E34 it's been a while but it's, it's definitely not EWS so uh, we'll put that in and see how it fires up Okay, so we had a successful fire up with this silver labeled 413 ECU and now I'm going to swap it out for a maroon 413 ECU and we'll test that one out. And I've disconnected the battery again to prevent damage to the ECU while it's being disconnected. And we're gonna put this guy in. Maroon 413. No EWS in it. And it's a stock chip, by the way. And we'll reconnect our trusty ground wire. And I'll reconnect the battery. Okay, that's pretty much it. So let's go uh, try and fire it up. I'm going to disconnect my camera from the mount here. And there it is. It's fired right up. So at this point, you know, you can run any 413 ECU or any chip combination you want. And if you fried your DME, you can just go to Wrecking Yard or Craigslist and get a new one and, and slap it in without taking it to the dealer to have it recoded. Now you still need your key with the chip and transponder to start this vehicle. And so you still have that safety. And that's pretty much it. So you know, I hope this helps somebody out. And thanks for watching.